in a way, there's more pressure on Josh because, I mean, let's face it, you're going to feel a bit silly getting through to a final without doing anything and then not giving a good account of yourself. But Josh has obviously just got to see it as a free roll. I mean, this has been great. He's guaranteed second place. Could go one better. What a break to start with as well from Neil Raybone. Uh, just for those wondering, because all the bounties, because that was bounty versus bounty in the previous match, essentially because of where we got to, it meant the winner was going to end up whatever happened. There's no point doing the draws. The winner of the tournament will take home the extra two bounties. So essentially, winner of the tournament, extra £1,000. Just makes it an extra £1,000 of difference between runner-up and winner. I think the, the right result, you would say, would be the Neil win, but Josh getting a chance to, to show what he can do. But this is a first to four match. Anything is clearly possible, as we've seen throughout. This is the 32nd match we've watched this weekend. Started out with 32 players. We had the one extra life, which is why we've needed 32 matches to get down to what will ultimately be the last man standing. mistake he was looking good there that plant wasn't too challenging and finally we get to see Josh Kane at the table in the last man standing he arrived at 10 a.m. yesterday it is now 10 past 10 p.m. on Sunday so 36 hours after he arrived he finally gets to play a shot <laughs> <laughs> a great tournament up until this point though he's, he's made actually very constructive use of that 36 hour well, it's been a very profitable 36 hours, that's for sure. Whether he wins or loses this match. I mean, I'm sure he's enjoyed moments. It's actually probably been quite hard sat out in the arena, much as we joke about it, not knowing when you're going to come out. Is it actually a bit of a strange position? He joined us briefly for some commentary yesterday and spent the rest of it sat out in that main match arena, just not actually at the table. I guess there's a, as well as the tournament, there's a few statistical uh, things he could put out there. He could win the tournament without dropping a frame. He could win the tournament without missing a ball. Nobody's ever done that before and unlikely to do it ever again, <laughs> he would say, with ultimate ball. Not even on his radar, but these are the things I'm looking for at the moment. I just think what's going on right now is incredible. He's not going to beat the record you were talking about winning the no, tournament without playing a shot. Unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> For some reason, I felt compelled to get involved in this frame. Yeah, I was thinking, could he win the tournament without potting a ball? That was that was something I was kind of, oh, I've come up with another way of how he could have done it. Neil could have Neil could have uh, potted the eight ball and the and the white on the first frame and, and then the second frame lasted the rest of the time. So that he could have actually won the tournament without potting a ball. To be fair to him, he's actually got off to a pretty good start here. He's just got to play one Difficult shot. The rest he's been in good control of. And that's not worked. His first mistake of the weekend. Yeah, and actually a bad moment. You never really want to miss the last ball because you can see the yellows are quite nicely spread around. Not an easy position to play a safety from. Not an easy position to pot the red from. So does he try and play this cushion first and make the red? Yes, he does. Oh, Josh Kane, take a bow. That's absolutely incredible. Well, he can keep up the flawless record you talked about, about not missing a ball. If he can get this eight ball down. Not sure if he can just cut this to the middle pocket without risking losing the white in the corner. May have to look at the double. Or dig down on the white. Almost a miracle clearance from Josh Kane, but comes up just short with the final ball. This shot's special, though. This shot, that is very, very special. And it's, it feels very similar to the Carl Sutton shot in the previous match. It, it means nothing because he misses the next ball. And that was a tough eight ball. Make no mistake, but kind of almost devalues the, the magic. As in the last match, Neil Rayburn suddenly gifted the chance back at the table that he probably thought he'd lost. Right now, 
that does feel like the stars are aligning for Neil. Slightly overdone that positional shot. He's now going to have to load up with left-hand side, which doesn't make the pot any easier. Let's drift the cue ball somewhere up towards the ball cushion. Played it nicely, though. The fact he's got a natural angle here is helpful because he can just concentrate on potting the ball. Doesn't need to think too much about the white. It's naturally going to track down the middle of the table. Should leave a fairly easy shot on the eight ball. Job done for Neil. That's the opening frame in the books. He used up a quarter of the match clock as well. So disappointing for Josh because he got in there with a good chance. First match of the tournament for Tom when he finally got out there. But slow start for him and once Neil got that one out of the way, he's, he's looked really good. In a way, I think the slow starts probably helped because he has built up as we've gone through the tournament. Well, those two yellows kept themselves out. They were both flying in and both rejected. Watch the two yellows to the bottom corner here or top left as we look from the overhead. I thought one of them was sure to go down. Yes. Yellows would seem to be the choice of colour for Neil. Yeah, agreed. Yellows look good. He's playing in a fairly steady manner as he has through the last few matches. He's using the full allocation of time more often than not which is why it took five minutes to play that first frame. I don't think it's really a deliberate game plan. He's certainly not trying to slow the match down. He's just trying to make absolutely sure that he doesn't miss anything. purposefully leaving the angle that way round. He could have run the cue ball further forward to leave an angle coming down the left-hand side of the table. Wanted to get over to probably the most difficult ball, which is the one furthest to the right-hand side. Has he overdone it? I think he's overdone it for his plan. I, I can still make the shot. Should still be okay, should leave some kind of shot as long as he pots this ball. Well, maybe he'd worked it out that's where he wanted to be because it actually works out really well because this yellow slides past the other yellow to bottom left and gets him on the one on the bottom cushion as long as he doesn't land straight, it's essentially out. So he was kind of pointing and looking at, at slightly closer to the, the cushion but actually that was perfect for him really. That was a good shot as well. It was important to pot it clean because it helps him to leave that ball there. It makes this one along the rail unmissable. Also didn't want to punt the yellow that's over the pocket away from it because it's in a good spot where it is. So I don't think he'll hit this too hard. If he does go yellow off yellow, he doesn't want the second yellow to go up the cushion. In fact, able to pot that clean as well, which has made it even easier. One more positional shot. You can see the gap isn't huge that he's going to have to play through. I always felt like the gap was okay. I mean, it's not massive, I agree, but he's taken quite a long time to kind of really be pinpoint on where he lands here. Yeah, I mean, that's been the pattern of how he's played. He's taken plenty of time on a lot of shots, making absolutely sure. The key thing here is the frames, though. Getting a 2-0 lead is incredibly valuable, particularly against an opponent who's yet to win a frame in the tournament. Two frames away now from that title. Oh, that eight ball is tracking. Nothing else, though. 
now's the moment, Josh. Although the first shot is horrible here, this is actually not a good layout at all for him. Yeah, good white if you're not going to pass the ball. Why's that not gone in the pocket? I mean, the layout's not great anyway. I don't know if it's an opening shot whether he could play the red along the top rail. He's not going to be delighted to have to do that anyway because it's not like the rest of the layout's very good. This is exactly the frame he didn't want. Under 10 minutes remaining in the match. Two frames down. Doesn't really want to waste five minutes chasing a safety game around in this frame. He's going to take it on. Red on the brake line a problem, and obviously the one at the bottom of the table, but he wants to take this on. He wants to be aggressive, try and fight his way into this final. You can't really blame him. If he was the one with the 2-0 lead, it would be a different equation. He's got to get something started. Red goes past yellow, so that one's OK, but it's the ball on the other side of the table that's the problem. In fact, the list of problems is growing because of the ball you've mentioned on the break line. The ball tied up at the bottom of the table next to the two yellows that he's now looking at. Well, he has opened it up, but he's not on anything else. Not ideal, unless this goes in the middle. Horrible shot if it does. What else is he? Got to go at though. Maybe forced to take it on. Don't see a safety. He's opened up the yellows really nicely. Yellows are lying very pretty here. Oh, what a shot that is. He's got a line through to the ball over the top left, so he can keep going. Still got the problem with the ball on the brake line. He's done well though to get even to this point of this clearance. I think he just needs to drag it in and try and almost, if he could land where the yellow is just below the brake line in the middle of the table, play the double to the corner and the one at the bottom's fine. And he drags it in exactly as I said. He actually held it above the, above the brake line, which means he'll probably play the double into the center now. I have to work the cue ball pretty hard here to get round. It's an easier double played into the center. It's a wider pocket to be coming into, but yeah, more travel required with the white. Big, big shot, this. Oh, and it's a great shot. <laughs> what a shot. What an out this will be. Obviously, he's two pots away, but he's straight in here. Well, all credit to Josh Kane. This is a difficult situation, and he's made lightish work of what could have been very, very awkward. This is his first final with Ultimate Paul. I'm glad from his point of view to see that clearance because you feel like he'd have been pretty disappointed to come out in the final and not show what he can do. He's going to want to go one better. It's not really about having one good highlights real moment, but at least that helps get him started. And what a chance he has to go back to back here and make it 2-2. Two, two. These are all there. These yellows are nice. Compared to the level of difficulty the, the previous frame, it, night and day. Not a good chance to level up at two all. It's been a great quality tournament. It feels like it deserves a good final. story it would be if Josh could find a way back into this final. Doing all the right things, looking very composed out there. Helped obviously by getting that last frame. 
normally settle till you've got a frame in a match, never mind a frame in a tournament. And this is looking like it should be all very straightforward for him now. Should get there just about the moment we get to the, the final five minutes as well. Quarter of the match remaining, but 15 seconds a shot to see which one of these two players would be able to steal it away if Josh can take this out and make it all square. Oh, I've just left more angle on this than he really was planning. I mean, he's going to take his time and work it out. He can drop it in and just leave the cue ball there. And it's simple enough eight ball, or he could come across and use the cushion. But whichever way he sees it, it would be a bad shot not to be on the eight ball here. Ideally, I'd like to leave a slightly simpler shot to the middle pocket, but still not a problem. He's taking a moment to steady himself. It's not ultimately a difficult shot, but wants to make absolutely sure of it. Well, Josh Kane looked like he could be frozen out of this match, but two good clearances back to back. Neither have yet to win an ultimate pool title. One of them has to. And it might be Josh Kane with that break. Cue ball straight in off. Josh Kane's going to get the chance here in frame five. And at first glance, it's another golden chance here. These are beautiful. These reds really are just sitting pretty. One of Neil's worst breaks of the tournament. Cue ball straight into the middle pocket without touching anything. And a nice spread apart from that. Just got to be careful here just to make sure you don't kind of lose track early on in this visit. First few shots at 15 seconds a shot can normally catch you out. Both players have been using the full allocation of the 30 seconds. It's going to be forced into playing quicker. It's not a situation where you should be thinking of anything really of the match clock. Just needs to focus on the shot clock. These two shots is going to take out probably the two most difficult balls on the table. Not that any of them were super difficult. Should just have the simple stuff to do after that. Josh Kane's been playing pool at the top level for a long time, but will there ever be a more dramatic moment in his career than if he was to win this title, having played one race to four? It would also be interesting to see how he'd feel about it. Obviously, it's a major title and you know a, a fun title to win, but good prize money. But also, will it give him the confidence to kick on and, and achieve more with Ultimate, you know, achieve what so many people expect of him? He well, must get himself into a bit of a mess there. Just slipped out of ideal position. Played a good shot to hold it. Just got to nip into this, drag the cue ball back a couple of inches. Yeah. That's fine targeted to the yellow there. He was probably playing full ball on it, but if he just slipped by it, the pace he played at was never going to be a problem. Goes one frame away from the title. Three straight, three straight visit to, visits to the table as well. Big break coming up. And he's made a ball. In fact, he's made a, a bunch of balls. And the split's good once again. These reds aren't bad. Control yourself and the title's on the line. The only thing you would say, eight balls a problem. The reds actually all go nicely, but the eight ball's a problem. Given the match time, do you just take the view that you'll pot the seven red balls, try and play some kind of position on the eight, but probably won't matter by then. I think you can use up enough time. Yeah, you can open up the... the like, nudge the yellow off the cushion is probably the easiest way of dealing with it, but then you won't have a good red to get back above the eight ball. Interesting decisions for him. I think he would like to have been straight in on the red to, to left centre here because then he can top across for the one on the left-hand side then right centre and you dealt with those three. And he's going to do it the same way but into the centre pocket. And that just checked up on him a little bit. He wanted to be straight in to the left centre there. The match 
match clock ticking towards the one minute mark now absent a major error from Josh Kane it doesn't look like Neil's going to come back to the table with enough time to get the match levelled up maybe maybe 20 seconds at best Josh gets himself to the to the eight ball here drop it in he would probably maybe depends on how he feels here either finish low on the red to bump the yellow out the way to take the double in the middle but then you'd be high on the double it'd be a pretty big cutback or just accept the double to the corner but more than anything it's about the clock was it down to 34 seconds so he makes this yeah i mean he's gonna he's won the title here yeah he knows he knows he can run it out doesn't really matter what he does he's not going to leave leave enough time yeah match clock started after the 15 seconds had ticked by he doesn't even have to play another shot what a performance what a tournament i mean what an outcome absolutely incredible and josh kane is the champion absolutely amazing to see a player not play for the first 36 hours of this tournament turn up one race to four and win 3-2 from 2-0 down. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Look, we're not going to keep you any longer. Your first ultimate pool trophy is on the way, mate, and a decent payday as well. Enjoy this one. We're going to bring in tournament director and social media manager, Simon Panner, to make the presentations. Your last man standing is Josh Killer Kane. Woo!